plunger in one corner, so it would have done around the circle like that. Now, this is a nice target here. That's, that's a good one. As hard targets begin to appear, they're logged into a computer database. Looks like a very good target. I mean, it's in some geology, but it's, got, it's pretty hard. Then, the last thing they want to see, flat lines. Under the merciless pressure three miles down, ocean explorer's sonar has fried out. Hello, Bridge. Bridge. Yeah, when we get this uh, towfish up uh, close to the surface and start to get it behind the boat, I'm going to want you to turn into the seas and give us as dry and smooth a ride as we can, okay? The boat carries a fully equipped workshop. Still, it may take days just to isolate the breakdown. And only then can they begin repairs. And nothing like this is ever cut and dry. I mean, there are set procedures for doing things, but in other cases, I mean, you sort of wing it and use your intuition and base everything on your experience. Let's see. Preparation is the only factor in Kurt's control. He spent years working out the variables, charting wind and currents, plotting the physics of the sinking capsule, even designing specialized grappling equipment to lift Liberty Bell from the ocean floor. Malfunctioning sonar is frustrating, but it's only a delay, not a defeat. Three days later, after round-the-clock repairs and the long plunge to the bottom, Ocean Explorer is back at work, hunting for history at the bottom of the Atlantic. Now we just found two small targets that uh, are pretty hot. That are no geology around and a flat surface. Stand by one. The team begins to review an unexpected flood of promising sonar hits. 88 contacts are considered targets. Not too many we can handle it, right? Four days. It's 22 day. targets a day. No, I don't think so. Just a target every hour. The search area turns out to be a 24 square mile box full of red herrings. Of course, I think a lot of them are probably geology, uh, but maybe not. I mean, I don't know. To send the remotely operated vehicle Magellan to the bottom to examine every target would take weeks. To narrow the field, they must try to decipher which sonar contacts are rocks and natural features and which might be man-made. Mark and I right now are going through and eliminating what we consider geology after further investigations and interpretations. And what we do is we try to prioritize them so that we don't waste a lot of time when we do dive because we have a limited amount of diving time. Because like we say, you don't, you don't want the ROV down on the bottom looking around for an hour and then find a rock. We want to find something a little more substantial. The ocean will give it up when the ocean is ready to give it up. We'll give it up when we decide it's when, going to give it when up. When it's described, decided that we've suffered enough. Right. Prioritizing calls for a cross between hard science and human intuition. Striking the wrong target off the list will condemn Kurt's quest to failure. Yeah, that's a good one. I like that one. I do get some say in this, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's an isolated, uh, hard target. Nothing scattered around it. But yeah, yeah. That's a pretty nice one that you showed me last night. Yeah, that's a nice one. That's a nice one. I mean, it's in some geology, but it's, got, it's pretty hard. Yes. And the next one is right behind it. Anybody want coffee or anything? I do. It, it, looks, like it looks like geology to me. Oh, one eight. Days of debate narrow the list from 88 contacts to just 16. For the first dive, Kurt picks a cluster of promising sonar hits. The first in line, target 71. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, ignition, lift off, lift off. Roger, this is Liberty Bell 7. The clock is 
evaporating. Loud and clear, Jose. Don't cry too much. Okie doke. Propelled by 78,000 pounds of thrust, Gus Grissom headed for outer space. Okay, it's a nice ride up to now. You get in an airplane, you turn on the afterburner, and that thing lights off. That's, that's what he was doing with the Redstone Rocket. You light that damn thing, and he's on the end of a torch. That's exciting, no matter how you cut it. Okay, the fuel is go. About one and a quarter G's. Cabin pressure is just coming off the peg. The oxygen is go. We're at 26 amps. Flying seven times the speed of sound, Gus took control of the joystick and through Liberty Bell's picture window saw a panorama never seen before. We are at zero G and turning around and the sun is really bright. I could see the sun shining through the window and uh, I was so fascinated by this view out the window that I had difficulty concentrating on the instruments. I kept wanting to peek out the window. Barely five minutes after blastoff, it was already time to prepare for re-entry. Mr. Jettison is armed. Mr. Jettison is armed, going to uh, break command. Plummeting to Earth at 7,500 feet per second, Liberty Bell burned into the atmosphere. As the speeding capsule fell from its apogee, gravity and momentum built to crushing force. Okay, the G's are starting to build. So Roger. G's are building. We're up to six. There's nine. There's about ten. He did everything perfectly. The rocket did everything perfectly. The spacecraft performed perfectly. The parachute came out, and there he was. There goes the main chute. It's reefed. Main chute is good. Main chute is good. Rate of descent coming down to there's 40 feet per second. Offshore, marine helicopters lifted off from the carrier Randolph to pick up Grissom in his capsule. The first chopper to reach Liberty Bell was piloted by Jim Lewis. It was in the air when we spotted it, and uh, we had contact with uh, with Gus soon after that. You got a head just uh, bearing zero, two zero, I think. Kind of getting ready for uh, impact here. You can see the water coming right on up. Uh, Liberty Bell 7, this is 9 card file. I, we have your, your entry in the water. We'll be over you in just about 30 seconds. Uh, I have actuated the rescue aids. Uh, the reserve chute has jettisoned. In fact, I can see it in the water, I think. See something around the water. And the whip antenna should be up. As they circled the capsule, the copter's crew prepared to latch on their recovery hook and haul NASA's second manned spacecraft to safety. Then something went wrong. 